<laughs> You're certainly in a hurry, aren't you, Jimmy? Well, I can't afford to be late. Not with my regular shore leave starting tomorrow, and then... Me waiting for you. Ah, uh, you said a mouthful, baby. <laughs> look. <laughs> She's got that look, hasn't she? Sweet Sally Ann. <laughs> Sit up there, baby. Oh, gee, we sure had a swell time, didn't we? Oh. Just like a couple of kids at the beach, huh? It's been wonderful, especially after you've been at sea all these weeks. <laughs> Tomorrow night, we'll have one of those good old fish dinners at night. And go to Joe Benji's for a drink or two? Sure, we'll the old places. Only tomorrow, there'll be champagne instead of beer. Champagne? Whee! <laughs> it must have been a profitable cruise. Oh, I don't know. I was lucky at cards and nacy Ducey. Is that all? What do you think? I think you're the smartest man in the Navy, Jimmy. You should know, baby. <laughs> and after my enlistment is up, watch our step. That's next month, isn't it? Yep. Oh. Yep, the 23rd. You know, we're going to have enough to take a good long honeymoon. Let's talk about it tomorrow night. All right. Tell the driver to turn here. Hey, turn to the right here. Say, you've moved, haven't you? Mm-hmm. So as to be a little closer to my work. Oh. Oh, driver, will you stop at the next apartment? Well, shall I uh, call for you here tomorrow night, then? Perhaps downtown will be better. It'll save time. All right. It's Sam Shine parlor, then. All right. You better hurry, you'll be late. All right. You were supposed to be on board this afternoon. I've been on officer's business, Snoopy. If I was looking for you, I got a postage stamp here. Maybe you'd like mine. Yes, yeah, it's canceled? Sure, look. No, it's faded out too much. Uh, but, 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 Chief, it's an old rare one from Guatemala. I wouldn't take it home from a raffle. Dave, too, sailor. Hey, what's the idea? That's without leave. Orders to pick you up. Uh, what are you trying to hand me? You can't do this. I only work for the government, too. Come on. I tell you, I don't know nothing. Now, look here, Woodford. Selling United States Navy secrets is a pretty serious offense. I never sold anything. We know different. Well, maybe a few foreign stamps. You know, Captain, I collect stamps. We're not talking about stamps. What we want to know is what you did then of the Navy's new range finder. You stole it and we know it. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm not admitting anything. Take him away. I'm giving you a good long time to think it over. Nice, boy. Are you waiting for Jimmy? I beg your pardon? Jimmy Woodford. Perhaps. Why? He won't be here tonight. But he's promised. He said... Yeah, he... I know, but something happened, and he sent me to tell you that he can't come ashore. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr... Uh... Roberts. Steve Roberts. I'm an old pal of Jimmy's. You've probably heard him speak of me. Yes, I, uh, I think I have. You can tell Jimmy I'll see him tomorrow. Yeah, but you can't. Here, that's enough. You can't see him tomorrow, either. What happened? A-W-O-L. I don't understand. A-W-O-L? Absent without leave. He didn't get back to his ship in time, and... <laughs> They threw him in the brig. But he left me in plenty of time. Oh, it's just one of those things. He probably stopped on the way to have a drink. You know, Jimmy's always getting in trouble, and I always straighten things out for him. Well, that's too bad. I guess I'm going to spend an awfully dull evening. Yeah, well, it kind of looks like maybe I'll spend a lonesome one myself. Well, that makes two of us, doesn't it? Yeah, I always say it's an ill wind that blows no good. I've got an idea. Maybe you and I could go places. 
I didn't know a sailor could be so bashful. I really didn't. Oh, then you'll go. Say, that's great. And Jimmy won't care either, especially if we go the same place as you and he were going. Well, he, he always loved his fish. But I guess most sailors don't... No, uh... as a matter of fact, the only place you can't get a fish dinner is aboard ship. And I'm starving for one. Oh, wait a minute. I just happened to remember. Jimmy gave me some sort of a letter for someone. But I thought you said yeah, he was... Yeah, he a... is in the break. But he managed to slip it to me when nobody was looking. And I didn't get the name. Would you know about it? I know. Why should I? Oh, what's the difference? He can take care of when he gets out. Where'd you say that place was? Well, we'll have to take a streetcar. For Jimmy's girl? Taxi! what you do to make a sailor feel like he's walking on air. Keep on doing it. You're awfully sweet about it. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. I'm awfully happy to see you here. And I hope you're starving to death. Well, then you'll appreciate my fish dinner. Huh. You have to be starving to death to appreciate your food? <laughs> Good lady. Do I speak English or am I a foreigner? You know, no one in town, Colbrooms, Hammond, Joe's, cooks a fish dinner like Nick Salato. Is he telling the truth, Miss Evans? At least he has an honest face, Mr. Roberts. All right, it'll be fish then. Grilled sea bass, huh? That suits me. Thank you. Waiter, grilled sea bass. Now for the rest, let's see. What do you say? You leave the rest to me, huh? And to drink? Beer. Okay, beer. Champagne. Champagne? I was fooling. It was only for Jimmy and I were going to drink champagne tonight. Okay, champagne for Jimmy. For Jimmy? Nick, this is Chief Petty Officer Roberts, a friend of Jimmy's. Pleased to meet you, Chief Petty. You know, he's not bad, but uh, seeing you without Jimmy is like seeing coffee without cream. Is uh, Jimmy sick? No, it's nothing as serious as that. He's just being held aboard ship because he was late. And if you know Jimmy, you know he forgets time. And it was really all my fault. Oh, but for a pretty girl like you, I could forget my wife and family. Oh, Nick. Any man could. Say, Miss Evans, watch out for this fellow. He's trying to cut Jimmy out. Went along with that order. Get it into the kitchen. So that's Nick. No, it's strange. I wouldn't imagine you to be the type at all. Well, I admit I'm no Don Juan, but... I mean, you don't appear like the one Jimmy would pick for a friend. Well, everyone has to pick someone. I suppose so, but you're so different. You're not at all like him. I'm sure I'm not as lucky. a little bit high on these prices. Of course, I don't usually order champagne. Well, that's all right. I'm glad you did. On the, uh... Say, I wonder how well Nick knows Jimmy. From coming in here, I guess. Not well enough, I suppose, so that I could sign that check. You see, I... I'm awful sorry, but I haven't as much money as I thought I had. Uh -huh. I have some change. Say, wait a minute. I was supposed to collect a little money from the fellow this was intended for. Remember his name. Jimmy whispered his name quick like. He didn't have a chance to repeat it. I wonder what's in it. Can I be of any help? Mr. Salado, were you to receive an envelope from Jimmy? Envelope? Me? No, I'm quite sure. If I could find out who it's for, it'd help me out of my trouble. Trouble? You shouldn't have any trouble. No? You check us, I haven't got enough money to pay it. Please let me. Oh, no. Well, yeah. That's awfully nice. I... Ten dollars? Gee, I didn't know girls carried that much money. I get $27.30 a week for being an honest working girl. Thank you. My gosh, I think I can guess what's in that envelope. 
Yeah, I'm no good at guessing games. What's your idea, Nick? Well, what was Jimmy always looking for? What was he always searching for? Your stamps, of course. Sure, he was always collecting them, everywhere. Yeah, but I didn't know he sold any of them. Of course he didn't. At least I think so. I've seen Jimmy sell something to one or two men. Yeah, maybe Joe Benji knows something about this. Who's Joe Benji? Well, Jimmy and I always went from here to there. He runs sort of a cocktail lounge. Well, let's go to Joe's. All right. Thank you. Come back again. Awesome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, what's the idea? I, I must have tripped. That's too bad. Here, let me. No, no, no. Warm water will be much easier. Yeah, so would a cleaner. Well, maybe you better try the warm water. Well, yes, the, the washroom is right over here, sir. All be right. Much, be right with you. It'll just take a second, sir. What's the matter? More trouble for Jimmy's friend? Just a little accident. One of your waiters spilled soup on him. Waiter. Clean this up. Gangway, Admiral. Oh, say, listen, young fellow, who has the right of way here? Uh, oh, so you want to play, huh? Hey, what's the idea? <laughs> what kind of a dump are you running here, Nick? Dump? You call my place a dump? Well, what would you call it if drunks climbed all over your customers? Somebody bothered you? Well, I'll have him arrested. Oh, never mind. He's taken care of. Skip it. Well, Steve, what's happened? Your pocket's all torn. Oh, well, there's no wonder. Some drunk was pushing me around. I'll take your coat and have it fixed. No, oh, thanks, Nick. Can we go? Yes. Good night, Nick. Your dinner was lovely anyway. Oh, I pretty much forgot my cap. Oh, yeah, and the envelope. Good night, Nick. Good night, Chief Petty. Oh, my gloves. I left them. I'll get them. No, I know just where I left them. I won't be a second. All set? Yes. And where to? Joe Benji's. Yes, and maybe you can deliver the envelope. Sure, and we've got to make the same rounds you and Jimmy have made. I'm having a grand time, even without Jimmy. What happened? You tell me. You're supposed to be the smoothest pickpocket west of New York. And look at you. A safe cracker could have done better. Oh, don't squawk. I went through his pockets all right. He had no envelope or nothing. All right, now get out of here before a customer shows up. Not that way. Go out through the back door. Hello. Hello, boss. This is Nick. Listen, there's a chief petty officer just left here with Jimmy's girl. And he had an envelope with him. I saw it. So yeah. long. Well, I'll be. What? Well, I haven't got a cent. We've been robbed. That man you had a fuss with? It must have been. Well, I still have a little left. <laughs> it looks like you're taking me out. Four dollars. Is that enough? It'll have to be, unless I can find the fellow that wants that envelope. There you are, all right, aren't you? <laughs> Everything all right? Mr. Benji over there. Good evening, Mr. Benji. Do you remember me? How are you, Miss Evans? I haven't seen you around lately. That's right. When the fleet's away, this is one little child that doesn't play. What'll it be? I think just a scotch and soda. Make mine a beer. Is that out of consideration of my four dollars? I'm just playing safe, that's all. 
Oh, Mr. Benji, I want you to meet Chief Petty Officer Roberts. Glad to know you, Mr. Benji. You know a friend of mine, Jimmy Woodford. Woodford? Jimmy Woodford? You know, we've been in here often. Oh, yes, sure, of course. Fine fellow, Jimmy. So he's afraid of yours. Well, I'm sort of filling in for him tonight. I'm doing so hot, I guess. You don't seem very unhappy. Oh, but I am in a way. Jimmy's been confined to his ship for something or other. We're doing all right. We might do a lot better if Mr. Roberts could locate the party that Jimmy wanted him to deliver an envelope to. Oh, yeah, we just came from Nick Salato's and he said you might help us out. Who is it for? That's just it. We don't know. Jimmy told me his name and I can't remember. What's in it? Oh, just stamps, probably. You know, Jimmy's always collecting strange postage stamps. Could be that, but I'm not sure. Of course, if you want to leave it here with me, I can take care of it. Yeah, but I was supposed to get some money for it. Well, I don't know about it. And I am not putting out any cash. But Mr. Benji, I once saw Jimmy talking to one of your guests in here, and it seemed to me he gave the man an envelope. That's nothing to do with me. Sorry I can't help you out. We are out of luck. Especially with only 270 left. Hardly enough to set up housekeeping. It's not even enough to buy a marriage license. Just how do you know that? Are you married? I'm sorry you asked me that. Oh, as a matter of fact, I ought to tell you the truth. I'm not married. Oh. <laughs> Would it make any difference if I was? Personally or otherwise. Well, you can put it any way you want. I guess I've just been kidding myself about you. Let's call it an evening. Oh, wait a minute. You've got me all wrong. It probably wouldn't make any difference to you whether I was married or not. Just a sailor man on the loose, eh? Come on, let's go. Oh, no, please. I'm sorry, honest. Steve, I wish I could decide whether you're a sly Don Juan or just an awkward, bungling, saltwater hick. Well, I'll be anything you want me to be. All right. Just keep on being a hick. I like you better that way. Okay, I'm a hick. And just to prove it, a scotch and soda. Two scotch and sodas. I hope you don't mind walking home. With you? No. Oh, Steve, look. There's the man I was telling you about. The fellow that was with Jimmy? Sure. Well, what are we waiting for? Good evening. You remember me, of course. I'm Jimmy Woodford's fan. Who's Woodford? Why, he's the Navy man I saw you talking with several weeks ago. He gave you an envelope. I'm afraid you're mistaken, young lady. But I'm sure I'm not. Mr. Roberts here has another envelope of Jimmy's to deliver to someone. That's your business. I don't know you or any of your Navy friends. Now, wait a minute, mister. Not so fast. The young lady's made a mistake. It's no excuse for you to get high hat. Don't get so excited, young fellow. Uh, don't bother, Steve. Come on. I don't like his attitude. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, mister. Well, here's to a grand evening. And the discovery that money isn't everything. You said a lot there. How much change have we left? Let's really go broke. All right. Unlucky at gambling, lucky at love. There's only one way to find out. A lemon. A little sugar and we'd have a lemonade. Here, you try. All right. Easy, easy. Go ahead. A bell. Another Another lemon. What's the idea of turning them down? Don't you understand? Jimmy Woodford is in the brig, all right, but not for being AWOL. They're holding him for investigation. When did you find that out? A few moments ago, after Nick Salada told me this girl just left his place with a new boyfriend. This is going to be it. Uh, waiter, get me some change, quick. He might be a friend of Woodford's, or he might not. But the girl seems to think he's all right. But we are not taking any chances. At least not until I talk to the old man. Please. Oh, Steve, we're not doing so 
good, are we? <laughs> Maybe we don't live right. Maybe. So you think we should take a chance? All right, if you say so. You're the boss. So the chief knew all the time that they grabbed Whitford? Yes. Don't know how he found out. But he also says that the name of Woodford's pal is Steve Roberts. Did you describe him to the boss? He has never seen Roberts. Yet he wants us to accept delivery from him? It's so important that we've got to. But he wants us to watch our step. All right, but don't... He's got to be somewhere else. Listen to this. How far away do you say you lived? About six miles. Oh, evening constitutional. <laughs> she goes. Open your purse. Okay. I was afraid of this. Afraid? Why? I was looking forward to that walk home. Oh. Yeah. One more nickel. Oh, no. Save it. We can still walk home, you know. Leaving us? Yes. With every nickel in the machine. That's what the jackpot is for. I just got a telephone call from Nick Salado. He said that the man expecting those stamps you've got in that envelope was just in his place. Hmm, now we're getting somewhere. It never rains, but it pours. Is he there now? What's his name? His name is Peter Dry, but he's gone. However, he left word that, that if you'll call at his apartment in half an hour, he'll be there. What's the address? It's over on Malone Street, number 267. 267. All right, and thanks for your trouble. Say, by the way, how much was Jimmy supposed to get? I don't know, but I hope it's more than the 15 bucks he owes me. <laughs> Sounds wealthy, doesn't it? I'll say. 267 Malone Street. That's over in the cheap apartment house district. We got plenty of time. Yeah, let's just ride around for a while and talk. Steve, why do you bother about delivering that old envelope? Well, Jimmy said it was very important. Well, we got a whole sack full of nickels. Let him deliver... More days. I don't know whether he's broke or not, but if he is, a little cigarette money won't hurt. Oh, you can loan him some. Let's just go for a long ride in the park, like you suggested, and talk. I think I'm having fun. Me too. Gee, it's great to ride around like this. <laughs> you know, a fella joins the Navy to see the world, and what does it amount to? I don't know, Steve. What? Well, it's sort of like... like riding in this cab tonight here in the park. It's all dark outside. You might as well be blind. And then all of a sudden, a certain girl crosses his path. And then what happens? What? He begins to see things. The sun begins to shine, is that it? Yeah, everything's different. You notice for the first time that the leaves are green in the spring. <laughs> sure, that's it. Oh, gee. It's great to dream like this, isn't it? Yeah. If something doesn't happen to wake you up... Well, there it is. We're awake. Well, what happened? I think it's a blowout. Sorry, folks, but I got to change a tire. How long will it take? As long as you want. Oh, splendid. Come on. Oh, Steve, isn't it beautiful? I'll say. Do you see that gondola over there? You mean the one just coming over the horizon? Yes. With its red sails in the sunset. It's coming into port. Let's go aboard, shall we? All right. Hey, lady. Gondolas ain't got no sails. Ours has. They must be daffy. Ain't how blind some people can be. I wasn't till tonight. Well, here we are. Won't you step aboard the gondola? What? No gangplank? No gangplank. But Steve... Well, they're I... only for lazy people and landlubbers. Oh, of course. I should have known better. Six bells and all is well. Cast off, Skipper. Set your course south by west. What port is that? 
Just 10 degrees below heaven. Jeez. Oh, we're acting like a couple of kids. Yeah, but we're having fun. Come on, let's talk it over. I suppose living would be pretty dull if we didn't do some of it in dreams. Sure. You know, we haven't any proof that everything, I mean, even being alive isn't a dream. No, I didn't hear him right up, did you? No, don't pay any attention to him. Perhaps you'd better open the envelope and see for yourself what's inside of it. No, I trust Jimmy. I'm sorry I even suspected him. I trust him with anything I've got. It's evident he trusted you, Steve, when he told you where I'd be waiting. Yeah, but that's different. Anything's fair. In love and war, I know. Okay. Pretty good on that bike, aren't you, son? Maybe I should give you a nickel. Maybe we should give him two nickels. Maybe we will, if you promise to go somewhere else and spend it. I like popcorn. Here you are, young man. Do you like popcorn? No, just spend it all on yourself. <laughs> He's kind of a youngster, isn't he? Yeah, I've seen cuter, but I don't know where. Maybe we should move. Look, Carol, maybe when my hitch is up, I can buy a small schooner. Might not be bad trading down in there among the islands, especially if I could enlist the right sort of first mate. What do you say? That was a sweet proposal. But Steve, you hardly know me. You just met me tonight. Oh, I know, but it, well, it seems like I've known you forever. Um. One's enough for me. Yeah, one's too many for me. I like popcorn. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you realize how late it is? Oh, nearly 11 o'clock. I bet your mother's looking for you. Bet she's not. She might be. She's at the picture show. Well, maybe if we gave you another dime, you'd like to go and see the picture show yourself. No, I've seen it already. Besides, it's nearly over. Look, if you were the right kind of a kid, you'd go down there and meet your mother. You wouldn't <laughs> let her walk home alone. Dad's waiting for her. How far is the picture show? Oh, about a mile. You know, you think you're pretty good on that bike. I bet you can't ride down to the picture show and back in 10 minutes. It's a cinch. How much? Two bits. Get 50 cents. Where's the money? Here. <laughs> I can make it an eight. If he does, I'll wring his neck. Did you ever see such a little nuisance? He won't bother us for a while. Yeah. We'll have to be gone before long. Well, maybe we'd better go now. The tire's probably fixed. Oh, wait a minute, Carol. You haven't given me an answer yet. Steve, I... I don't know what to say. I... What's the idea? I just remembered I'm not supposed to ride in track without a tail light. Do you know any more tricks? Oh, sure. Watch. Oh, you're not so hot. Okay, but I bet you can't do it. If I do, will you get away from here and stay away? All right. But you can't. Hey, can you ride a bike? I don't know, but I'm willing to try anything with get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you're terrible. Very funny. <laughs> well. <laughs> hey, how 
How am I doing? Fine. How do you like that? Fine, he's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> Watch this one. What one? This one. How about you? I'm all right. <laughs> you pulled my bicycle, you big A. I did not. You really did. Now, listen here, you're going to have to pay for it. You were running around here and bumped it into the bench and broke my front wheel. Stop yelling. It's your fault. Now, listen, i got to have it. Stop yelling. You're going to have to pay yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? Oh, nothing, officer. Nothing to get excited about. He broke my bike. Just a little accident, officer. He ran it into the bench. Look. Well, you're a pretty good-sized lad to be riding a little boy's bicycle. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll pay for it. It'll cost you three dollars to have it repaired. Well, surely not that much. Well, I guess you'd better pay him. And let that be a lesson to the Navy. What do you mean, a lesson? Oh, never mind, Steve. We'll pay for it. Hold out your hat, Sonny. Yeah, there's enough to buy a new one. There. What's anybody doing carrying all these nickels around at this time of night? Is there any law against that? There's a law against breaking into telephone boxes. What are you talking about? I've had me orders to keep me eyes open for people breaking into telephone boxes. But don't be ridiculous, officer. That money came from a slot machine. Slot machines are again the law. There ain't any. Oh, now you know better than that. I'm going to take you two down to the police station and hold you for investigation. Come on, Sonny. Give me them nickels. I want to hold them as evidence against this pair. Come on, come on, hand them over. Come on, come on, give me those nickels. Come on, give them to me. Have you got it fixed? Almost. Well, look, look, we won't be able to wait. We'll have to get another cab. Hey, uh, what about my fare? Uh, here, this will take care of you. Maybe I'm Daffy. Only take me a few minutes to see this fellow. You wait here. Don't be too long. Don't worry. What do you want? Are you Mr. Droit? That's me. Well, I understand you expect an envelope from a pal of mine, Jimmy Woodford. Yeah, that's right. All right, come in. We play a little poker here sometimes. We've got to be careful. Yeah, I can understand that. Hello, Chief Petty. You're just in time to take a hand. Hello, Nick. No, thanks. AC Ducey's about my limit. Say, uh, what'd you say your friend Jimmy was pinched for? Well, as far as I know, he didn't get back to his ship in time. Too bad. Jimmy's a nice boy. You said something, Nick. You know, Jimmy and I have been shipmates for nearly three years. He gets around a lot more than I do, but don't think there's anything that Jimmy wouldn't do for me or I wouldn't do for him. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be plenty lonesome next month when he quits the Navy. Jimmy leaving the Navy? Say, without his uniform, he won't look natural. That's what I've been trying to tell him. The jobs are pretty scarce, too. Are we going to play poker or not? Finish up your business, Droid. Oh, hello, mister. I didn't expect to see you here. I get around. Wait here for me. I'll be back. Yeah, Jimmy and I were even talking about going into business together. He's about as swell a pal as a fella could have. Have you got the envelope? Sure, I have. Say, Nick, is Mr. Droid here the man I'm supposed to give the stamps to? Well, uh, yes and no, you see. He's just sort of acting as a broker for a friend of his. Yes, so did uh, Jimmy tell you how much he was to get? No, well, I, just, I, I don't exactly remember. Well, I know. Let me have the envelope. How much was it? $500. $500? I didn't know there were any stamps in the world worth that much. You don't know much about stamps. 
Or maybe you do. No, I don't know anything about him, but if they're worth that much, Jimmy better take care of the deal himself. That won't be necessary, sailor. If the envelope contains what I want, you get the price agreed upon with your friend. Yeah, yeah, but how do I know it's a price agreed on? Maybe it's more. Looks like he's planned to chisel out the little for himself. No, I wouldn't do that. I just don't want to do the wrong thing. Hey, you folks got me all wrong. Anyway, how do I know to reach the man I'm supposed to deliver it to? I better let Jimmy take care of this. He'd be free in a couple of days. If we're dealing at all, we're dealing right now. Come on, you four flusher. Wait a minute. There's no use looking for unnecessary trouble. As a United States sailor, you've got to think of that. He's stalling, I tell you. We'd better put it up to the boss. I tell you, there's something wrong with the whole setup. Relax, will you? Before you have a nervous breakdown. Hello. Hello, operator. Give me clear view. 7496. Hello, is that you, chief? This is Slavens. Yes, he's here, all right, with the envelope. But you don't want to give it up. Okay, chief. Well? He says, get it. So you like my fish dinner, huh? Yeah, it was all right, Nick. Cost too much. Too much? Too expensive? Why, you had wine. All right, Roberts. Let me have the envelope. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Droid. You're putting me in a tough spot. Let me have that envelope. Well, I'm not looking for any trouble. I didn't know postage stamps meant so much to you fellas. It's gone. What's that? Let me see. I'm not kidding. Well, I had it with me all the time. I'll bet I dropped it in that taxi cab. Where is the cab? Downstairs. Watch him, babe. We'll take a look. Seat. Hello? Hello, is this Clearview 7496? Yes, that's it. I'm Jimmy Woodford's sweetheart. Well, your men have been dealing with a friend of his by the name of Roberts for an envelope of stamps. Mr. Roberts really hasn't the envelope. I have. Yes, I know where it is. I'll be there in 15 minutes. No, I don't get this. All I was trying to do was a favor for a shipmate. You'd do the same thing, wouldn't you? Yeah, we know all about that. You fellas got no right to hold me here like this. I think I telephoned the boss again. Do it upstairs. All right. Somebody's plundered, but somebody's going to pay for it. You got a cigarette? Mm, sure. There's something wrong. What is it? Break it in. What are you trying to do, bring the whole neighborhood down on us? All right, driver, let's go. Hello. Oh, it's you. I was so frightened. So was I. Those men came rushing out and searched the cab. They searched you? I was never treated so rudely in my life. They found out I lost that envelope, and they got mad. But Nick Salado was with them. I don't understand it all. Just between you and me, I don't understand it either. Where 
are all those men so interested in an envelope? Did you have it in your pocket when we left the cocktail lounge? I think so. Carol, are you thinking the same thing I am? I believe so. Oh, no, Jimmy's not that kind. I've known him too long. He's my pal. He seems so happy-go-lucky and so generous. We just mustn't be it, Steve. No. But even if it is stamps, we should try and find it. Why don't we go back to the cocktail lounge? You might have left it there. Are you sure those men didn't find it when they searched the cab? Oh, I'm sure they didn't. But I was so upset and so frightened. Steve, you'll forgive me for driving off without waiting for you. Sure. I understand. Hey, driver. You better check with Benji about it, too. Hello? Who's this talking? Where's Mr. Cronger? That's funny, he's not in. He was there a few moments ago. To meet someone? Where? Who was it? You coming along? No, I'll wait here. I'll make it snappy. Driver, we won't wait. Cab ahead. Driver, can't you go faster? Good evening. Are you the gentleman expecting Jimmy's girlfriend? If you are the girl, I am. I'm her, all right. I hope I haven't kept you waiting, Mr. Uh... I know your name. That's of little interest to me. And my name is of no interest to you. Sit down. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to be curious. You see, I came alone, as you told me. Yes, I know you did. Have you got the envelope? Of course. And I guess you must be wondering how I happen to have it. You see, when I heard Jimmy was in trouble, and then his friend of his showed up, and so I just thought I'd better take the envelope myself and bring it to you personally. How did you know that I was the one to give it to? Jimmy told me. I never met your friend Jimmy. But you are the man who wants it, aren't you? Let's see the envelope. Of course, you were going to pay some money for this, weren't you? I suppose you know how much. All right. Tell me about it. What's the joke? Well, I... I don't know what you mean. Where are the drawings of the new rangefinder I was to get? I bought this information two months ago. Well, I guess there's been some mistake. What are you trying to do? Trouble cost your friend Jimmy Woodford or me? I don't know anything about it. For two cents, I wring your worthless neck. What's all the shouting for, Carol? Oh, Steve, I'm glad you came. Looks like you should be. Who are you? What do you want? I'm a friend of this young lady. I figured she might get into some sort of trouble, so I followed her here. Get out. 
You better go, Steve. And fast. Now, wait a minute, mister. I'm not looking for any grief. You see, Yes, I... you see, we were both trying to deliver that envelope. Oh, so this is the fella. Yeah. How about the money? It's not what I wanted. Oh, it wasn't the postage stamps after all, huh? Well, I guess we can both go then. It's all right, isn't it? Sure, it's all right. Well, I'll take this with me. Your servant told us you've left the house and we're coming here to meet a girl. We put two and two together, Chief. That's the monkey that hit me on the chin and got away. Stop it! So you are not looking for trouble, eh? I'm not gonna stand by and let him punch me in the nose. What do you want to do with him, Chief? Maybe he doesn't know anything anyway. Maybe he does and maybe he doesn't. At least I'm going to find out who the sailor boy is. Take him out back and hold him. I'm sorry, Steve. You're doing all right. You're among friends. Steve. This door, lady. But, Chief, I don't trust the girl. Why turn her loose? I'm not turning her loose. You are going to take care of her my way. Check on this fellow Roberts and call me back at this number as soon as possible. Oh, Nick. I'm expecting an important call. Take the message. Good evening. Hmm. Looks like there's room in here for both of us. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, driver, I've been waiting for you. This friend of mine's had a little too much. Would you mind taking him home? Why, yes. I've been getting my share of drunks tonight. Where to? Uh, 4936 Maltrose Avenue. Okay. We left Babe to keep an eye on him. He got away from you fellows once. He won't get away this time. He better not. Yes, Nick, what's the message? Look, Mr. Croger, he said there is a chief petty officer, Steve Roberts, that's a pal of Jimmy's. But that Steve Roberts is aboard a ship right now. He's in the brig with Jimmy. Then who is this man we got out back? How many guesses do you need? Thank you. 
friends you have. And no friends of mine. My mistake. Listen, I'm helping you to get out of here. Isn't that enough? How'd they get here? I called them. I had to. Oh, afraid for me, huh? You turn on your own friends. Oh, forget it. Let me open the door. Well, why don't you open the door and let them in? You've got nothing to worry about. No, but you have. Isn't there some way I can get you out of here? Window. Same way I came in. Started from. Yeah. Well, I'll see you home. Oh, no, thanks. This is far enough. Good night. Good night. You mind if I make a suggestion? What? If I were you, I'd, I'd disappear for a while where nobody could find me. Thanks. And listen, sailor boy, let me suggest something. In the future, be more careful about the friends you pick. Good night. Good night. It's taken us a long time to uncover you, Cronzer. It's quite a compliment, coming from you. Morning, Chief. Any of them talked yet? Enough to send them away for a long time to the Federal Penitentiary. Take them out, Riley. Looks like you did a pretty good job in breaking up this ring, Fletcher. 
Yeah, and I'm glad it's all over. Rather a clever device of yours, using that envelope in order to smoke out the ringleader. Don't forget I had some help. You mean the girl? It's uh, one thing you've been rather sketchy about in your report here. Why wasn't she rounded up with the others? If she had anything to do with it, it was through ignorance. I explained it all there in the report. Ah, uh, I know. If you expect to arrest her, you'll have to do it without my help. Send that girl in. What is this, a fast one? I thought so. Look, I want you to know I had nothing to do with having it brought in here. Miss Matthews, I want you to meet Steve Fletcher, one of our operators in the Navy Intelligence Department, Brooklyn Division. So, you let us work together blind. I don't get this. Steve, I want you to meet Miss Matthews, also of the Navy Intelligence. She's been working on this case for weeks out of this office. Gee. Mr. Fletcher's taxi is waiting. Taxi? Yeah, I gotta go to Brooklyn. The train leaves in 15 minutes. All right, I'll go to the train with you. Wait a minute, Miss Matthews. I haven't had time to notify you, but you're leaving for Manila, and the boat leaves at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, Mr. Day. Wait a minute, Miss Bailey. I've got a great idea. We worked old case. Why can't we do this one together? Yes, and I like Brooklyn. Can't you do something? I'm sorry, Steve. After all, I only work here, too, and orders are orders. Mr. Fletcher will have to leave immediately if he's going to make his train. Hurry, Steve. You've got to catch that train. Oh, Steve. I'll tell you what. We have an investigation coming up later in Honolulu. If you watch this one up quickly, maybe I can put you both on that. They tell me it's a swell place for a honeymoon. Oh, Steve. The boat trip down, Waikiki Beach, moonlit night, soft guitars. Darling, I watched this case up in a hurry. Goodbye. But I still have time to see you to the train. Come.